Robbie Williams Rewind. Welcome to Robbie Williams Rewind. We are the champions. I'm Matt. And I'm Lucy. And along with help from special guest fans, we take you on an in-depth rewind through the solo career of multi-award winning singer, songwriter and entertainer, Robbie Williams. So, an incredible thing happened. Yes. Very incredible. Um, almost beyond words. <laughs> <laughs> we got to interview Robbie, Robbie Williams, Williams himself. Yes. It um, happened. Finally, what, how many episodes in? 35 episodes or something? Yeah. Uh, four, no, 40 episodes if you include all the specials. Yeah. Um, 87 hours of recording, <laughs> as we tell Rob. We finally got to speak to the man himself. Yeah. <laughs> incredible. What, what an incredible interview. I mean, unbelievable. Just, uh, I mean, we've known Rob for such a long time and we've had interactions with him on chat and a couple of Instagram calls, but it's not quite the same, is it? No. This was uh, a very open and candid Rob. Yeah. Uh, and really, we really hope you enjoy it. Um, we put a lot of effort into preparing for it as you will see in the episode itself <laughs> and uh well as you were here and see yeah <laughs> so if you're new to our podcast welcome um, yeah you know it's nice to have you join us perhaps you might consider checking out some of our previous episodes where we have special guest fans they talk about their robbie memories and what their favorite songs and lyrics are and we talk about a different album or group of songs in each episode we've had loads of special guests on as well yeah um that have worked with rob so you know check us out and you might learn some things that you didn't know about rob and his music yeah it's a really good way obviously we're biased but it's a really good way of understanding the backstory and the collaborators and the wonderful creative people that rob has collaborated with over the years uh it's really really interesting to find out how some of these songs came about and some of the things that happened in those collaborations so yeah f please do go and uh, take a listen to those other episodes as well yeah and if you're a long-term listener thank you so much for your support um obviously we wouldn't be here we wouldn't be interviewing rob without the support of the listeners yeah um thank you so much for listening and getting our numbers up and uh supporting us on social media yeah, and, and and to those of you that we've seen out and about um, in 2022 on the tour as well, it's been lovely to hear your feedback. And yeah, it's been, thank you for all the kind words that you've all said about the podcast. It's really, really means a lot to us. Yeah. And please do leave us a star rating or give us a review on Apple Podcasts. Please, 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 please. Be that begging. does help. Begging, as Ida says on her podcast. It doesn't take very long. Literally, you just have to click in put the stars in <laughs> few words would be helpful as well it's always good to have a few words on the on the review otherwise it just yeah it doesn't look quite as good so thank you please 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 review the podcast it helps yeah so yeah thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy this incredible interview with mr robbie williams himself yeah enjoy you are robbie williams we are the champions and for this show your ass is ours and you better be good, oh. because we're going to be fucking phenomenal, Rob. <laughs> okay, well, then we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. So across 40 episodes, we've talked for over 87 hours, about 388 songs from your 25 stroke, 26, 27 year solo career with listeners all around the globe. So it's the perfect time for you to be the ultimate guest on a podcast all about you. Yes. Oh, you know, it's so, it's so cool that you do this. And um, it, it does, it makes me very happy that you take such interest in what I do because um, what I do musically is very important to me, you know, and um, I never, I seldom talk about music really. It's always mm. what's, you know, what, what, what makes me me and the makeup of my brain and my mind and my body and my soul, uh, because I don't really know how to talk about what I do. Um, I, I think that I get a lot of plaudits for 
how I perform. Mm -hmm. You know, people are always very nice about um, how I entertain. But um, people, like I say, people, the the, the news, journalists, prints, are seldom um, kind about yeah. what I do musically. And I think that's because um, erroneously, there is a feeling that I don't do anything. Well, you know, that's, that's not true. No, I know, I know. Uh, but um, it, it it's sort of that leaving a boy band thing. Yeah. And it, it kind of stuck. Yeah. You know, I don't think anybody re thinks that there's a malady in my head. And I don't think that anybody really thinks that it's me doing the lyrics. But um, which is super odd to me and frustrating. You know, yeah. not too, not too frustrating that you know. Yeah. On a level of want to really want to really frustrate, and it's a six six point five. Right. But um, so when I found out that you were doing this, I was very grateful. Very grateful. Yeah. Well, well, wanted to. There was yeah. a space for it. it. Needed to be done. It right? did. You know, all these other artists have got podcasts about them, and I was like, well, why isn't there one for Robbie? There needs to be. Thank you. I appreciate it. And here we are. We appreciate you joining us after, uh, yeah, the 87 hours, 388 songs that we've, we've <laughs> been through. And we've really loved it. I mean, just to give you some, um, do, you wanna, do you wanna talk about Yeah, that? so yeah. each episode, we have a special guest fan who helps us talk about the album that we're talking about. Um, and they give us their own memories of being a fan. Um, we talk about the tours. And we talk about, you know, our favorite lyrics and yeah. everything that we like about the music. And we've also had some special guests on that one of the two of them might have mentioned it to you. I'm not sure, but we've spoken to Steve Power, Steve Sidwell, Calvin, Danny and Rich. Incredible. <laughs> we had such, honestly, with, well, with all of them, we had such a laugh, um, particularly with Calvin, Danny and Rich. Uh, Dinosh has been on recently and told us um, her story, which was incredible. And uh, yeah, we had a cheeky visit from Perez Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> who, who absolutely loves you, by the way. Um, no way, that's, yeah. that's mental. <laughs> Did you, Very um, random. Yeah, how lovely is Cal uh, Calvin and Danny and Rich? Oh. Yeah, we loved them. Absolutely loved Honestly, them. Honestly, it was just, they loved talking about their work with you, and we obviously enjoyed, they, they were just so warm and so kind and so generous, and uh, we were communicating with Danny about arranging it, and it was just, it was just a beautiful experience. It really was. Yeah, they, they, uh, they're very, they're very, very special people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, um, yeah, the, and literally from less than a mile away from yeah. me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, that, that felt lovely, that period. And we still work together. Rich, Rich sent me something, a couple of things this week. Um, that period felt lovely that there were, there was Stoke in the house. Yeah. yeah. And, and it also feels amazing that Burslem can create these swing songs too that yeah. are just proper standards. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to and to be part of that with such beautiful souls. Oh. Um yeah. I I really I really value their love for me because um I I know that they are that their, their souls are spotless. Yeah. No, and and if they and if they love me, that means I'm a good person because <laughs> they only <laughs> like good people. Well, that's kind Absolutely. of what we wanted to say is that we kind of felt through speaking to all these people that yeah. they're all so lovely. That what does that say about you? Well, yeah, that that thank you. That does say that does say nice things about me. Obviously, um, but I think it's a it's a joint effort, you know, because I've got great management too. Yeah. I've got lovely people that look after me, which is why I've been there for 27 years, yeah. you know, so um, I won't stake claim for the loveliness being all me, but I'm a big part of it. Yeah. That and my management being beautiful souls and lovely people too. So it is, it is a love fest. I've got kind people around me, haven't I? You have. Yeah, you have. Yeah. 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 That, <laughs> en that energy must help really must. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so we've before we get into deep into the questions, we've got a few questions from us. 
Yep. Some some which you may expect us to ask. Um, some you may not. Yeah, we're trying to maybe. I think we'll we'll go for a dip, bit of a different view to maybe most interviewers. Um, hopefully, but uh, yeah, we hope you like it. So to start with, the number one question on everybody's lips, Rob, is: Will you ever sing "We Are the Champions" live again? Do you know what? Probably, I, I, I get, I, I understand. <laughs> Probably not, um, unless there is an absolute call for it. Um, oh. It's a really difficult song, is it? I took my time, <laughs> my curtain call. I did that, that. It, it's, it's really high, and it only works when it's really high. And I, I don't know if I could sing that high anymore. Um, Maybe, maybe I will now I'm sat here thinking about it. I think uh, you can. Maybe there will be a call for it, but I understand why you're asking. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably just us calling for it. So, you know. <laughs> when was the last time you heard that song? 2001, I think. No, 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 not oh. me singing it, but like in oh, general. That we oh. heard it. Um, oh, I haven't heard it for a while, actually. It normally comes on most family parties, uh, you know. Yeah. But Where does the name come ones? from? Uh, well, a champion. One description of it is that it's uh, we used to be gladiators, apparently, and fight for the the lords and ladies of the land. That's the description I like to go with. A really? champion is a gladiator, yeah. Much wow. unlike me, but <laughs> apparently that's know, where it came from. You've got one of them Roman faces. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, I, I could see you, you. Your your face deserves a bust. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get me one for Christmas, Lucy? Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so the next question, um, well, basically we saw you've got some new tattoos and wondered whether you could tell us a little about a little bit about them, especially the cartoon type one on your arm. Did you design that? Yeah. That was no, uh, I thought you did. I, I don't I don't okay, so I've got I haven't got a mind for numbers at all. Can you see? Can you yeah. see those? Numbers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and it, it's awful that, like, I'm I'm numerically dyslexic, and also mm -hmm. numbers won't stay in my head. There's um, uh, my my the uh, the old house that we sold in LA has got four numbers, and the address, and then I couldn't remember what it was any time. I'd I'd have to ask all the time. Mm -hmm. What 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 are them numbers? I'd get three of them right, but the fourth one would always be wrong. Right. Now, if you translate that into what was our anniversary date and when was Coco born and when was Teddy born and when was Charlie born, I went to the opticians with Teddy and Charlie and uh, the two oldest, and the optician was like, and dates of birth. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I'm in front of the kids and they, they're, they're going to find out I don't know. Um, and I was like, oh, excuse me a second, just got to take a call. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've written down all the dates of birth. So they are there. Right. Uh, Teddy's got Ted, um, yeah. a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. Coco's got Coco Ch the Chanel. Yeah. And then uh, this isn't a very good, uh, this the, this shirt's a bit tight. Um, oh. And then there is a... Um, it's it's me and Ed. Me and Ed have been doing art, and it's part of the the stuff that we've been creating. It's mm. a character that I want to call Talk Shit Boy. All right. Um, Ed doesn't know that it's called Talk Shit Boy yet, but um, <laughs> yeah, there's that. Charlie hasn't got one yet, but Charlie did a really good drawing of the Flash. And yeah. um, I think I might get that tattooed later. And then Bo, I'm undecided what that is. So there's uh, they're very kid based tattoos. Okay. The, the weird thing is about the tattoos. You ask me one question, I'll do 15 minutes. By the way, <laughs> the, weird thing, the weird thing is about the tattoos is that like I'm not in control of them, and, t and Ida doesn't like them. You know, she's um, mm. she's proper proper <laughs> square. And um, like she wants to be in control of my tattoos and it's a constant bone of contention between the two of us. It's like, no, give me dominion over me. Um, so 
So I'm the, just gonna... the rolled up banknote still hasn't made an appearance. Well, I think I might get the rolled up banknote because I want to get the rolled up banknote, but I was going to get the rolled up <laughs> banknote for Charlie. But it's just, it's tempting fate too much, obviously. But okay. I want to get the rolled up banknote to remind me of who I was and where I come from. But also the rolled up banknote for my son, Charlie, is frigging hilarious. It is really funny. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't think everybody will find it funny and I'll probably get in trouble for it, but <laughs> <laughs> you book Robbie Williams, should get Robbie Williams. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the podcast is about rewinding through your career. Um, so if you could rewind back to one moment in your career, and relive it, what would it be? Um, <clears throat> what would it be? Do you know what? I, I'm, I'm really enjoying the now. Yeah. You know, the now is the the best that it's ever felt. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm I'm experiencing my career anew again. Yeah. Coming through COVID and being a different person now. Um because of the kids and because of the wife and because of family life. Um I get to uh, this the the feeling of gratitude is overwhelming, um, and how lucky I am. I feel as though that you know because of where I've been mentally, I I didn't really get to enjoy those moments, right? You know, and um, I was very pleased that they were happening to me, mm. but I couldn't truly dig in and go look at what I've created, look what's happening. Um, so <clears throat> I actually wouldn't rewind to anything. And if anything, it would be the last UK tour. Yeah. Weeks ago. Yeah. You know, and, and the future looks really bright too. Um, and where I want to take this, you, you probably noticed that I'm doing more talking and there's, yeah. there's stories yeah. and I feel as though that's the future of what I do on stage. It's like mm -hmm. play with the medium a bit, utilize the tools that I've got, the comedy, the stories, you know. Um, so, yeah, if I'm if I'm rewinding, where would I go to? I'd I'd probably go to. Personally, uh, I'd go back to the Under the, Ra the Radar concert. Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, Under the Radar was yeah Under the Radar was really cool. It's great that I we should I, I'll do more of that. Ah. We would love yeah. more of that. That was going to be one of our questions, actually. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do more of that um, for you guys, yeah. for, for us, you yes, know, because that yeah. is a definite, definite us thing. Yeah. Because yeah. there's like Robbie Williams, the the public entity, and you, pro you probably heard me say this before, but I'm a very big believer in give them what they want. Yeah. And there's you guys that... Uh, you know, the guys at the front. Uh, and then there's 17,000 other people. Yeah. yeah. No feel and no she's the one. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I'm blessed that I have these songs in my canon. But it is fucking annoying that I can't do Andy Warhol or I can't do um, Just Want People to Like Me or, or you know, or, or yeah. those kind of songs. It's like, yeah. But, that's what I'd rather be doing, but I I'm there to provide a service and um, also being on stage. And do, it's look, it's terrifying up there, mm -hmm. mixed with it being hyper, hyper incredible to some sort of surreal degree, where it's an out of body experience that is so beautiful. It can also be mostly terrifying yeah. that, you know, I'm on a tight wire and I'm trying to keep this thing going and I'm me and uh, I could fall off at any time. Um, trying to keep the energy of the room to feel safe for me as a performer. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to scare them because that scares me. Yeah. You know, if you put on, I, I noticed that like with artists like Morrissey, just recently he's been doing songs that haven't even come out yet on his tours and that's uh 
a wonderful and a beautiful thing to do. And, uh, but I'm a different kind of artist. Yeah. Uh, doing a different kind of thing. But it does mean that, unfortunately, I neglect people like you that would like to hear me sing stuff that's for us. Yeah. But that's why, that's why the whole Under the Radar thing is such a beautiful thing anyway. And will you be releasing Under the Radar 4 anytime soon? I've got two albums coming out, ba boom, pretty soon. Mm. Um, so I don't think it's going to be in the next couple of years. Um, but yeah, there's on this computer that I'm talking to you on, just to the left there on that red, that red thing with the the musical note on it. There's so many songs in there, mm. and so many songs that I love. Do you know? Do you know the album that I think I got completely wrong about what I did and didn't put on? Take the crown. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. But Raver should have been on there. Oh yeah. See, I got obsessed with Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just met you. This is crazy. And uh, you know, and there was like Katie. I, I, I've always kind of ran away from manufactured. Yeah, I've tried my best to yeah. stay out of that and always put in something that's just odd mm -hmm. or, you know, com uh, particular to me. Yeah. Um, and then there was uh, a manufacturer is a bad word. I don't I don't mean to use that. But then there was all of these artists out at the time that was just like, oh, my God, I love these songs. Yeah. What what a considered manufactured, you know? Yeah. And I was like, instead of running away from that, why don't I run towards that? And um, there were a few songs that I left off, Take the Crown, that should have been on it, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, but, you know, no no regrets about that, you know, to it's coin a phrase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, very proud of that album. So, um, Vegas you had to cancel some dates because of COVID. Do you think you'll be going back there at any point? Um, I don't think so. Oh, no, that's sad. Yeah, but I'm currently going to be building my own hotel so I can do my own gigs in my own hotel. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh. Cool. We wondered about yeah. that. Is that in Dubai by any chance? Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe cool yeah, maybe. but um you know I, I i'm taking the opportunity to dream even bigger yeah and and um i've achieved everything that i've achieved without even dreaming big you know i, I people always say in every interview what would you say to a 16 year old you <laughs> and i get bored answering it but the answer yeah. is dr dream bigger yeah yeah you know, um so I'm now taking the opportunity to dream big and to see what that means and where that will take me, you know, to put my foot down on, on the pedal of who and what I am. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, and I have a, um, accessibility to people because of my name that if I have a good idea, mm -hmm. They'll back me. So I'm I'm really excited about that. And there's there's several of these things. There's loads of these things that are happening right now that are just uh really taking my fancy and another part of the creative box, shining that light in a different corner and seeing if I could pull something remarkable off. Yeah. You know, and that that uh the hotel idea is one of them, and it's a remarkable thing to pull off and i'll be very proud of it when it happens i won't say if when it happens okay yeah it's something we've talked about on the podcast actually rob we've noticed over the past few years and i know you've always done it but in the past few years you've really been exploring your creativity and really been experimenting and bringing i'm sure you've been doing it behind closed doors but you've really been bringing it out and you know it's, uh, it's I mean, cool to see you so exploring those other things as well oh what are you well, going to show us now i i spend this <laughs> 
This this one's called Fuck Knows. <laughs> uh, so if you can just see this. Yeah. So all of these. Oh, wow. On my drawings. Yeah. There was loads. There is loads oh and loads, oh, loads and loads and loads. Um, so I'm doing something creative every day and uh yeah making something exist on a day-to-day -day basis that didn't exist the day before yeah and and you said before that you haven't dreamed big or you want to dream bigger but i've heard you and ida also talk about uh manifestation and you know abundance thinking and so is that something that's important to both of you um yeah yeah it is uh, I, and um i'm sure that with the new year coming up ida sent me a link to i think it was erica badu talking about the importance of writing it down with a real pencil on real mm. um, real paper and i'm gonna have to remind her that that was something that she sent me a link to it um a few weeks ago yeah. but uh there's no harm in trying to manifest something great for your family mm, mm. you know whether it works or not it doesn't matter it's just a um it's just a nice kind gentle thing to do yeah and um, i do have a belief that you can manifest things into your life i mean look at you you've manifested me into your life <laughs> yeah. absolutely <laughs> you know with 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 this podcast yeah yeah yeah. so um yeah manifestation but you have to take the shot too mm -hmm. yeah. you can't just you can't just go i want this to happen and no, then exactly. sit in a darkened <laughs> cupboard expecting <laughs> it to, to happen for you. Happen. yeah you have to make it happen yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you have to make it happen. Yeah. so you've got nearly 60 shows scheduled next year maybe even over that now um I think you mentioned it a moment ago, but would you say you're enjoying playing live more than you've ever done before? Yeah. Yeah, I am. But that's because I'm happy. Yeah. You know, it's We're taken that. Yeah. It's taken a long time. Um, but better late than never. And um, yeah, when you, when you can't experience joy, you don't experience joy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, but when you can, you do. And I think there's been a lot stored up for me, mm -hmm. you know, because I am, you know, I, I am currently. Um, yeah, I'm currently, I don't know, uh, smelling the flowers for the first time, seeing the bees and, you know, looking at the birds fly. Metaphorically speaking, uh, that's where my career is at right yeah. now. Yeah. It's just such a such a joy to be able to do all of this yes you and know. your family are sharing it in, with it with you as well you know you talk a lot about yeah. when, when the family are there with you you can see you can we can just see you light up with joy when you're you know when when ida's there and teddy's there and the albert hall yeah i mean Char incredible. charlie's charlie's not bothered yet <laughs> you know, i did that gig in i did that gig in munich to 120,000 people and I looked over at the third song and he was playing on his iPad. <laughs> <laughs> but like Teddy, Teddy just thinks I'm the best thing ever. Yeah. And, you know, and I know how much watching my dad meant to me and how proud I was of my dad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I glory in when Ted comes because I, I know what she's feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Will they be able to go on tour with you next year? Or they? Because it's a lot bits of bits and bobs. Yeah, bits and bobs. See, I'm gutted because you know there is a there's a thick because like Ted's a performer, right? Mm -hmm. w way ahead of where I was at the same age of it as her. Just un unbelievable, and um, a, a personality and. I know that, you know, there's the proud dad aspect of everything, but trust me, I'm, 
I know when my children are good at things and not good yeah. at other things. Yeah. Um, but she in particular is, uh, yeah, a, a mini me when it comes to performance. Mm. And um, I, I'm gutted that we have to hide her because I want my moments with her on stage. Uh, and that's a constant battle that may change. We may take a view and go, listen, let's just do this, yeah. you know. But up until they're 16 in our country and the UK, they're not allowed to put their faces in the papers. And I know that it's best that they don't become famous too young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robbie Williams, and you're listening to Robbie Williams Rewind with the Champions. So during the pandemic, you entertained us entertained us with Corona Oki as Bobby Billions. <laughs> um, you really did entertain us, by the <laughs> yeah. way. I mean, I'm sure you got lots right. of feedback, and I know that you saw the comments, but actually, you know, having you in our lives every night there was a dark time and that, you know, so many people got so much joy out of that. So <laughs> thank you for that on behalf of everyone. Oh, pleasure. So it's what's pleasure. happening with all those unreleased songs that you played on Insta live? There's so many. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, it was a, a joint effort with the keeping each other safe and entertained. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way that you guys felt about me being there, I felt the same way about you guys being there. It was a um, a little bit of sanity and safety and um, continuity, yeah, but which was much needed in my life too. Uh, what's happening with all of those songs? Well, everything that happens in showbiz happens at a snail's pace, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I've got used to it. I just, you know, you've seen the Loft House stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, so we've released Sway and we've released Soul Seekers, but there is a vault. Oh, and To the Light, we released yeah. To the Light. Yeah. There's a vault of Luft Lufthouse stuff. Yeah. I, could do, I could do three albums of Lufthouse stuff as Robbie Williams. Um, and it's just slowly, slowly, build it, build it. Um, there are... Like comment section, remember comment section? Oh, yes. love comment section. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> comment section. I wonder if it'll ever see the light of day. It's so good. But then what happens is new stuff gets written and yeah. the new stuff is the new toy and you get excited about new. And um, I, I want to put an album out before next summer. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Maybe comment section will be on that. Um, uh, but yeah, I want to put an album out before the before next summer, and some of those actually none of those things that you heard will be on there. Oh, no. everything's, <laughs> everything's, everything's, everything's brand new again. So but you know in, that's what under the radar is for, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, yeah. You'll you'll see them on under the radar. Probably yeah. things that you heard two years ago will turn up in three years. Oh. How mad is that? <laughs> Yeah. In the meantime, we have to just listen to them on YouTube. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, and following on from that, um, you know that us hardcore fans love speaking to you and chatting with you online. So, will we ever get a proper replacement for up front? That's a really key question. We miss the red light, Rob, and fans definitely yeah, miss I, the interaction with you. I, I miss it too. The thing is about. Um... The thing is about up front and the thing is about Corona Oki. In the end, it only takes a few dissenting voices to really affect me. I'm sensitive. Right. Mm -hmm. And then and then it becomes too corrosive. Yeah. You know, if there is, you know, I I, I home in on that stuff and it yeah. really affects me. And um, you know. Uh, with, with I, I'd love to do I'd love to carry on doing things like that and maybe I will at some point but um, when online stuff affects your in life yeah. uh, when it affects you and affects your family yeah 
Is she just obsessed with wrongness? <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, then then you you got to take a view. Yeah. yeah. You got to take a view. You know, it's uh, there's a lot of energy for one person. Mm-hmm. But um, but I loved it too. You know, yeah. it's like you know you know that I did. Yeah. Uh, poker days and um, upfront and uh, Corona Oki is they're all really really beautiful things. But there is a a danger that also online stuff can feed into your real life, not yeah. just with the energy of descending voices and madness. Yeah. Um, but also real life bodies turning up outside your house. Right. You know, it's just like, yeah, nah, nah. No, I respect that. I, I I was chatting with Lucy about that, and I thought that that could be one of the reasons why you'd sort of moved away from that a little bit. Understand that if it's affecting your your own well being, and and like you say, if it's getting a bit too close for comfort, I can totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm very, very fortunate that I, I found that when, you know, I did Instagram live and I'd phone people, it just felt like everybody that I was speaking to was a carer. Mm. I don't know if you noticed. You did. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like everybody that I was speaking to helps human beings. Mm-hmm. You know, that's and that's that's wonderful that I attract that. But also with that is the the opposite of that, you know, and um, it's unfortunate, but it's the way of the world. And we really, you know, the, what's happening with the with technology and um, the Internet, we're at the start of the Industrial Revolution. This is massive. Mm-hmm. And we don't know how to police it. Yeah. yeah. And it's out of hand. You know, yeah, the, the genie's out of the bottle and um, it's it's the Wild West. Yeah. And it's unsafe. Um, there should be more safeguarding for it to be a safe place. Yeah. But 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 there isn't. Um, so I, I have to take a view, protect my sanity and protect yes. my mental health. Uh, but unfortunately, there's beautiful people like yourselves and everybody else that um, I loved having contact with. Also, is you know, is a, a safe way for me to have contact with with everybody because I can't be everybody's friend to be everybody to everything to everybody. No, but I can in a little room with letters that you you type in, and you know, yeah, that felt that felt really good. You know, it's um, yeah. Well, it was a special place. So, wondering about your music videos, which one do you like best in terms of the finished product, rather than what which one you enjoyed making most? Hmm. I don't. I don't know if. I don't know if like is the word for videos. Or I don't know, I, I don't have, I don't sit back and go, that's my favourite. What's your favourite? <laughs> Feel for me. Feel. Matt, you don't really have one, do you? Uh, I like kids because Carly's in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like kids. I have to say that. Feels nice, black and white. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's beautifully shot. Yeah. But that's not how I view, that's not how I view videos. Um I've got I've got less and less tolerant towards them as I get older. It's yeah. uh, they're a means to an end. Um, uh, uh, but that being said, I think they're a means to an end because you kind of get pitched ideas. Yeah, and you go, oh, yeah, right, I'll have that. there's three ideas, and you go, oh, I'll do that one. But I think that if I became more involved in the subject matter. Like with 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 lost, I, I wanted that to be me with me. So like at the Brits receiving an award, I wanted to be walking behind me, like um, Finn Vendors 
uh, he did a film about these angels that follow people around. So like I wanted to be my angel in the video and yeah. like all of these moments in my career, I wanted to be there watching me. Yeah. Which um, became impossible to do and too expensive, too time consuming. So it became what it was. I think that if I had have managed to been able to do the idea that I wanted, then maybe I would have been more invested. I think the trick is to become more invested in uh, in these, yeah, in videos. Uh, oh. And uh, I'm less and less, I'm less and less uh, invested or interesting, interested. They're really boring video shoots. Yeah. It's but it's it's like sit round, sit round, sit round, sit round. Do three and a half minutes. Sit round, sit round, sit. Change. Think. Wait. Fifteen. Uh, do <laughs> thirty seconds. Do, do. So I have never done a film. Yeah. Right. You know, it's why I've never. The process is achingly boring. Yeah. Achingly. And now we're going to spend the morning shooting over your shoulder. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Better things to do with my time. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So um, we talked about Lufthouse earlier on, and uh, Tim and Flynn have been absolutely lovely supporters of the podcast. Uh, we've shared quite a, quite a bit of their uh, performances in your tour as well. So obviously, there's been good interaction with them there, and we're going to hopefully get them on the show soon. Um, when will there be a Lufthouse album soon? That's the question. I don't know if in that world there is albums. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't know if that happens anymore. Yeah. Um, but those two are hilarious. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, uh, you, you know, that I'm the older brother to Aaron's teenagers. We did a gig <laughs> in Ibiza. And I turned to Tim and I'm like, mate, is this your first time DJing in public? He went, yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny because I, we, we, uh, I, I, they came on first gig. I walked on. Everybody goes mad. Tim turns to me with his headphones on and he goes, "They fucking love us, mate." <laughs> um, so I, yeah, we're we're still we're still trying to figure out what kind of live entity Lofthouse is, but uh, it's enjoyable. I absolutely love it. Love it. And, and I particularly love Dublin, by the way. And I think I could see that they did as well. The crowd went nuts in Dublin when they came on. So oh, great. great. Good. So with the massive tour next year, there's a bit of a worry among fans that it means there won't be another tour for quite a few years after that. No, daddy goes to daddy goes to work. So <laughs> so we're good, are we? Yeah. The, yeah, in yeah. The, the four year plan that you talked about, it's not all hotels and art and oh no 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 it's there's not definitely music it's not. in that no it's it's uh i'm trying i'm trying to figure out how to do it without it causing me too much yeah. stress yeah i can't do four months in a row a month off another six weeks i can't i i'm, I'm not just i'm just not built that way yeah but um I like going to work and uh, I hope that doesn't sound callous when I say work because I love my job. I have to, I have to see this. I have to see this as a job, but it's a beautiful job, you know, and um, I love having a purpose and I love, I love creating and I also love creating an incredible environment for my family because of yeah. what I do. And uh, we've just moved into a new house and me and the wife are just, it's, it's blissful right now. We're just wandering around. You know, we had, we had this huge place in Los Angeles and it was basically like a super yacht on land <laughs> and it was impressive. And it was me putting the foot down on the accelerator to see what I could see what I could do, who I, who I, who, what rooms can I inhabit now that I've achieved all of these things? Yeah. And it was great, but it was, it was just, yeah, it was just too big, 
to feel homely. And we bought somewhere that feels like a home. Um, I've only been in it three days. And already I'm just like, this is where I want the grandkids to grow up. Oh, so, nice. and it's all, it's all because of what I do, yeah. you know, and um, that feels, that feels beautiful. I, uh, I get to go and experience something like I did on the UK tour and then come home and enjoy the spoils of what that means. And, um, you know, uh, Ida is so good at um, creating memories mm -hmm. and creating things for the kids, um, you know, and being able to facilitate whatever and however for these beautiful moments means a great deal to me and it means a great deal to them. Um, so, yeah, I will be... I'll be hitting the road and just I'm I'm constantly trying to figure out how to make it not be exhausting. Yeah. 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 And what whatever that means, I've got a few ideas. Um but I'm going to be about. I'm going to be about and uh, and also all of that talking that I did before these shows could lend itself to different venues and different forms of entertainment. Yeah. You know, so be expecting me to be a different kind of performer in different smaller venues, you know, chat in and mm -hmm. all of I that. I love stuff. your storytelling, by the way. I mean, absolutely. Thank you. you know, on, on the most recent tour in the UK, it's just an incredible experience. And obviously, we've seen you a lot, but it, we really mean that. It was incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It feels great being able to do it. There was, it was funny. I, I I think the did you think the Irish gigs were like the best gigs? We only went to one of the Irish gigs, but yeah. Oh right, was, okay. Yeah, the yeah. atmosphere I think was. It's always better quite, in Ireland. Yeah, we know it yeah, is, yeah. which is why we went there. <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is, uh, and um, there was I, I don't know if you were there the one night where I was so exhausted. I was having a lovely time, but I was so exhausted that I I launched into one of my stories. And then just completely forgot what I was doing and what I was saying. There's like this pregnant pause. Oh dear. I, but it was just me searching my brain for I'm going, where am I? <laughs> it was it, but but I think I, I I don't know if anybody noticed, but I those moments on stage where you forget what you're doing seem to last forever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh that being said, yeah, the Irish gigs were were really, really special. It was so funny how different things in different places go down because when I'm taking the mic, I, look, I take the mic out of myself. Yeah. So everybody else is fair game too. If I'm yeah. taking the piss out of me, I'm taking the piss out of you and I'm taking the piss out of it. Yeah. You know, it's like, so I am very loving towards take that, but I also take the piss out of take that too. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I love the boys and I love it. It, 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 but it's so funny because what people laugh at in Birmingham was not the same in Ireland. <laughs> you say something about take that, that's in the most loving way is derogatory. Yeah. So I'm derogatory about me too, you know, yeah, yeah. so, uh, but it, like it was a different kind of atmosphere in Ireland. You said something and then I realized after the first night, it's like, oh, they don't feel the same way about it here. <laughs> You know, which was lovely too, because that means that there is a a nice place in their heart for what take that is and what they achieved. Yeah. But I just thought that it was it was interesting how in different places people react in different ways to what I'm saying. Yeah. So shifting gears a little bit now then, Rob, if you'll let us. We've had lots of questions from listeners and we've selected a few of the best to ask you. Nothing too scary, don't worry. Uh, so Debbie Williams from Milton Keynes would like to know if you had a choice between winning one of the following, which would you pick? So winning a Grammy, an Oscar for best song or Port Vale winning the Premier League? Oh. Grammy, best song or Port Vale winning the Premier League? It's, it's Port Vale winning the Premier League. Um, I, I find the whole 
idea and concept of awards for creativity mm. baffling. And it's lovely to be able to say that, you know, I, I hold the most Brits. Yeah. And I can say this from a different angle, being the person that has, and it would irk me if I'd never won one. But it's baffling the the concept of awards. Oh, up for the award tonight is the colour blue. <laughs> up to, for the award tonight is the colour orange. And the winner is the colour orange. <laughs> What does it mean? Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. You know, um, uh, d uh, like, you know, your peers voting for you. I think that's what happens at the Oscars. Yeah. Gra yeah. Grammys completely not bothered about Grammys. Um, winning a best song at the Oscars would be great because that would mean that my film's done really well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that being said, I would trade it all for Port Vale winning the Premier League. But I have a very odd relationship with awards. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I could tell you, I won't on air, but a few stories that sort of nullify, nullify awards meaning anything. Right. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, especially when they're not voted for by the public. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Completely agree. The, the, the dodgy things that happen yeah. backstage. Uh -huh. You know, it, it's like if you turn up, you get the award. If you yeah. don't, it goes to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> but what does that make awards? Yeah. <laughs> so Amanda won this from Essex asks, would you like to do an acoustic album and concert? Yeah. I think that concept would run in line with me telling more stories. I know Gaz... Barlow is doing a one man show and he only does 12 minutes of. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We've been to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Was it good? Did you like it? Yeah. I loved yeah. We it. did. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. And um, I, I haven't seen it myself and I wouldn't go see it live because I can't be the guy that sits there that he's talking Mark, about. Mark went to see it. Yeah. I know, but Mark didn't make him ill. <laughs> you, could, you could hide at the back of a box somewhere in the shadows. That's what no, Mark no did. No one would see you. <laughs> Well, I watched, I don't know if you saw Mike Tyson's one man show. No. No. So good. Um, but I, I think that acoustically, that kind of show would lend itself to something like that. So, yes, is the answer. Okay. Um, that, that will be in the future. And Marie Burberry from Coventry asks a super important question What is your favorite sandwich? <laughs> And if you don't eat bread now, what did it used to be? I like that question. <laughs> um, I think I'd go for a tuna melt with mayo and tomato ketchup. That's the one that comes to mind right now. Um, what are yours? Uh, Chicken and cucumber for me. BLT for me. BLT. Yeah. I suppose that the uh, the club sandwich... Is a remarkable sandwich too, with fries. Um, but if I was going to go for anything, it would be a tuna melt with mayo and tomato ketchup. The uh, the bread must be toasted. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Kelly Thurston from Essex is intrigued to know how different is it to do a private gig versus a public gig. How different is the energy that comes from it? And do you feel that you give a different show when the hardcore fans are not at the front? I've done some bizarre <laughs> private shows. And I, I'm very grateful for them because, you know, I, I know that, you know, it's like I, I need to go to work just like people need to go to work. You know, I have a I have a, a lifestyle that, that the thing is about what I do is I know you, you look at rich lists and all of that business and think, fuck, you know, I, you, you don't need anything. But what happens is your lifestyle just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, I, you know, there's a, a lyric in the James song, Sit Down, it says, if I hadn't seen such riches, I could live with being poor. And um, it, you, you, you quite easily, quite easily gets out of hand. In the most beautiful way. Yeah. Uh, but I love my lifestyle. And um, 
it it feels good these private shows um facilitate an awful lot of things that make my life better make my life easier um so what do i think about them i there is some that are just phenomenal and really good fun and some where i just have to giggle to myself and you know i genuinely in my head just giggle that it's <laughs> now what watching me <laughs> <laughs> i've done shows where there's been three people watching me and and one was my manager one was ida and one was the guy that booked me oh goodness me <laughs> You know, it must so, be very uh, surreal for you to go from one extreme to the other like that. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, but it's fascinating. You yeah. know, it's it's, it's um, like I say, there has been private shows where it's it's phenomenal. It's really good fun when everybody's everybody's drunk and they're excited yeah. to see. You. Yeah. Um, you know, it. There have been private shows that have felt as good as any other shows there have been private shows where it's just bizarre <laughs> uh, and i i get through them but just giggling in my head <laughs> so alexander shalapin from russia is itching to know if you're going to release rude box 2 or maybe an under the radar volume rude, rude box might work so funny how rude box dictated my next three albums you know, there was a place that I was going with Rude Box that got derailed. And then I started to second think myself and I'd never second think thought myself. It was just like, this is where I'm going. Everybody will come with me. Um, and then I just panicked and was just like, oh, shit, I better put something else on the next one that sounds like, uh, I don't know. Uh, what did I do? <laughs> um my next album that I'm putting out, I want to imagine that it's 1995. I've just left Take That. And with everything that I know now, what would I do? Okay. So that's my next. Mm. My, my, that's the concept of the next album. And uh, that's what I'm really invested in. Yeah. Who knows where it's. Who knows where it's going? I I change with the wind, <laughs> but yeah, I'd like I'd like to do a rude box too. I love that album. Yeah, so do we. Great, oh, yes. and Danny Calvin and Rich are up for it as we spoke to them about it. <laughs> oh, I'm down for doing it with them. <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby Brown from Grimsby is dying to know if the Hello Sir poem you wrote on those little cards during COVID is for sale, please, because she'd like to buy it if so. <laughs> <laughs> um bobby brown yes hi bobby brown <laughs> hi darling i can't remember if did i write it down yeah oh it was, it was on a it wasn't a uh typewriter one no, i think it was a typewriter one. One. you did typewriter. Show, you, yeah you showed Ty it on instagram live I, I don't know i don't know where that is uh there is air do i do my all my art with everything that i did do you know what i what I wanted to do was cut all of those things that I did, all the colouring in, and put them in. I'd just give them out at the front to people like you. Oh, ah. we would have liked but that. Huh? Yeah, but they're in they're in Shropshire somewhere. <laughs> and everything that I wrote and everything that I drew has now gone into a vault, really, at Ed's. Oh, this is a right. combined Williams Godrich thing. And I don't know where the Hello Sir thing is. Um, maybe I'll do prints. Yeah. That yeah. would go down well. Well, maybe one day then, Bobby. One day. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Bobby, I'm looking after your son very, very well. Okay. Uh, and Bobby, thank God he didn't meet me in 96, 95. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of your tribute artists, Tony Lewis, said that if you walked into his gig, one of his gigs, it would stop him in his tracks. So he'd like to know who would stop you in your tracks if they walked into your gig. Who would stop high tone? Um, who would stop me in my tracks if they walked into no one really because I, I 
I, I love there being somebody in that's somebody that I admire that's in the same industry. Yeah. I, I, uh, I like showing off for them. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like, uh, I was thinking about who I lost the plot with the most. And uh, it was Will Farrell. Oh yeah. I like my 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 heroes are comedians. Right. You know, and when I did soccer aid with Will Farrell, and he used to come up to my house and play football with me in LA, I I went fully fanboy and just didn't know how to speak <laughs> to him. Because <laughs> I've got so, uh, so I reckon whoever <clears throat> whoever it's in the audience. Just makes me want to boss the show even more. Ah, okay. because, so you go you the know, other way. I, yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> it's the other way. Yeah. I think I think I get cockier when people <laughs> I know people are in the audience going, they'll fucking love this. <laughs> Hello to me. So one of your many, many American fans, even though you like to say you've only got one, um, Jocelyn wonders. Oh, Jocelyn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we recorded an episode with Jocelyn in this very house when yeah, she was yeah. over for the UK tour. Um, oh, she's so, such a sweetie. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, she wonders where you got the idea from the ti tiger on the pants. Uh, where did that idea come from? That <laughs> There's a lot was, of speculation about this, Rob. <laughs> that was Vaughan Arnell, the director. Yeah. And um, it would have, whoever it had been the stylist at the time. Right. Uh, okay. So um, they did me a big favor. It's, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, are they my? I still to this day, I put them on like a suit of armor to go on stage. Although, 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 you know, if it was down to what I'm an animal, am I now? I'd have a sloth on the front. <laughs> <laughs> Angie Redford asks, would you consider doing a tour where you sing an album in its entirety? It would be hey, her dream to hear the whole of intensive care sung live. Oh, that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? I, 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 I've often thought about you know an album a night. Mm. But that'd there's be a lots lot of, of nights. thoughts. There's lots of thoughts. What, what? So, what album would you like to hear? Hmm. That's tricky. Maybe life through a lens or under the radar one. Escapology. I don't know too hard it's really hard to say yeah no it'd be hard to pick actually very hard to pick yeah I, mm. I i bet you i'd do that at some point god willing and health willing i bet you i'd do that yeah yeah good <laughs> the band won't thank me though <laughs> no that's a lot of work if you imagine if you imagine doing 14 albums uh, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah learning <laughs> 160 songs or whatever it is, 170. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robbie Williams, and you're listening to Robbie Williams Rewind with the Champions. So we know you like a game, Rob. And yeah. uh, so to help us talk a little bit about your back catalogue, but keep it interesting... Not that it isn't interesting, but, you know, through the game, uh, we'd like to look at it in a different way. So um, to how you may have done it before with other people. So we're going to play the Robbie World Cup. Uh, OK, England lost, but you, you can't actually lose this World Cup, Rob. So um, is it song against song? <laughs> album against album. Album. Oh. oh. So we've randomly drawn 16 of your albums against each other. Here we go. No expense spared <laughs> here. We'll, we'll explain wow. this. So we've got wow. the studio ones, the under the radars, and twenty five. Yeah. So yeah. we've we did it is random. We we've filmed ourselves doing the draw. We yes. can put that on okay. our social media okay. to prove okay. it was okay. random. Okay. So um the first yeah, you've got to choose a winning album in each match until we get the winner. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the so first match is Swings both ways under the radar. One life yeah. through a uh, swing when you're winning. On, on, um, yeah, so the first two, the first matches between swings both ways and under the radar. One, who's your winner there? Under the radar, one okay. Oh, let's yeah. get the old uh, could, could take a few moments. 
Right, here we go. Right, there we go. Right, under the radar one. Okay. And then live through a lens and swing when you're winning. Live through a lens. Okay. Live through a lens. <laughs> <laughs> Highly rehearsed this. Uh, okay. Live through a lens. Okay. And then we've got under the radar two and rude box. Rude box. Hey, box. Right. Okay. Box. Have you got any questions you want to ask along oh the yeah. way? <laughs> and then now we've got twenty five and escapology been drawn against each other. Twenty five. Okay. Ooh. I had a few questions about twenty five actually. Okay. Yeah. So what happened to the Kylie bits on Disco Symphony? Will we ever hear um, that? Yeah, she did a disco album. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't know what happened to that. She she did a disco album, and because she was doing a disco album, and it was a disco, I, I don't know, there was a, hey, listen, do you mind if we don't because I've got this thing to do? Right. And, uh, she was uh, super busy, and you know, Disco Symphony is now just me. Mm -hmm. So was it, did she sing on the whole song, or was it just the pitch no, that was, she was it, on? It, or? Yeah, she, she, we, we, you know, we exchanged, we exchanged lines. lines. Ah. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll hear that one day. Yeah. Um, and how was it recording kids? I guess she did that where she is and just sent her she, vocals she over. She did that where she was and I was where I was. And yeah. yeah. Okay. We'd love to see the two of you on stage at some point. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Might have to come to Australia though, I guess, to see that maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and then Lost, very, very important question about Lost. Why did you drop it from the set list on tour? Um, I dropped it from the set list on tour because, you know, there's something amazing that I Love My Life does. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it kind of works as a hit hit. You know, and it's like my last sort of big one. There'll mm -hmm. be there'll be others, God willing. Um, but I was hoping that Lost had that sort of place and feeling in the room. And um, you know, I, I need lily pad to lily pad to lily pad to jump to. And when I replaced it with Old Before I Die, that lily pad appeared. You know, the, the room lit up um uh, and lost i i think the the you know what happened was normally to facilitate the success of something a video comes out timely and what happened with the video for lost was there is the grading place where it gets graded and all of the thing and the thing and the thing stuff i don't understand had a backlog there was a bottleneck in the industry for the finishing of these, you know, films. So the video came out too fucking late. Right. And, um, you know, I, I think that just the, the promotion, what didn't gel for the song, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And uh, I was hoping that Lost would do the same sort of thing that Life Through a Le uh, that I Love My Life does, yeah. but in a feel kind of way. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, and it should have done because um, it's a beautiful song. Yeah, uh, I think that if it was released in two thousand and two, it would be something that would be in my canon forever. I'm, I'm very proud of that song. I love it. I love it. I know that's a goodie. It is. We love. You, you we won't love add it next year back into the set list. Yeah, maybe. May, maybe, but I'm thinking of putting tripping in, and oh, you, know, okay. you know, there was there was moments that happened in europe where people got on board during um intensive care yeah so for a lot of countries in europe intensive care was their escapology right yeah, yeah. if you know what i mean yeah 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 i do uh, rude box is number one in germany that might go in uh trip in had a big moment all of those kind of songs so that they'll probably find their way into the set list okay. yeah 
we really enjoyed having tripping in Munich. Yeah. Munich, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It sounded, so yeah, it felt good. Yeah. yeah. And then also had a question, couple of questions about more than this and the world and her mother. Can you tell us a bit about them? Because you haven't yeah. spoken about them at all. Yeah. Um, I love those songs. Yeah. Love those songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the world and its mother. You know, I, I probably write a, song, a lot of songs about that, those lost bits when pre-rehab, before I knew that I had an illness of sorts and uh, what it meant to me, what it meant to a great deal others, that sort of acid house, dance culture, DJ culture, drug culture. Um, and being on the precipice of massive change for youth culture and being amongst it and feeling the energy of, you know, being, being at the zeitgeist of the world is changing mm -hmm. and our world did change. Um, in those moments, uh, and there is still a great love and a great hankering to return to the innocence of what we thought we were achieving, you know, and the world and its mother is uh, an ode to those moments, I suppose. Right. Um, we walk on broken glass just to get back home, a heart of gold and a raver's soul. You know, it's that sort of naughtiness of turning up back at my mum's house <laughs> with wide eyes. Yeah. Going, I hope she doesn't notice. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that. And you more than this, I suppose, is Ida's love towards me. You know, uh, you're more than this. You're better at life than you've been letting on. And I don't know why you're more than this. You are what it is. The world is at your fingertips. And there's more than this. You know, it's that, um, you know, delving into the archives of not being able to find joy and there being people there that are a life raft that want you to be well. Yeah. That's what that song is. You know, the confusion for people about how can you not be, I'm not saying my wife, but how can you not be enjoying any of this? <laughs> yeah. You know, and look what's happening. It's amazing. But yet here you are with the inability to procure any sort of enjoyment from it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I suppose that's what more than this is about. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Okay. So I'm going to the next match. Yeah, yeah, right. So uh, we'll, we'll get there sometime this evening, Rob. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so Sing When You're Winning and Christmas Present. They're up against each other next. Christmas Present. Right. So Christmas Present. Okay. And will we ever hear California Christmas be released? That's one question. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that that didn't make it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that'll have its day. Oh, I, it deserves its day on a on a proper album, but I bet you it'll end up on Under the Radar or something like that. Yeah. Because you said there was going to be like seven unreleased songs that you were going to release in 2020 on a reissue of the Christmas present, but that never happened. We got Can't Stop Christmas instead yeah i think because of covid will you ever think, release it again? I, I i have lots of ideas and then grown-ups step in and go yeah that oh. can't happen for whatever <laughs> oh, wow. reason i can't remember what that was but uh yeah there's still there's still plenty of christmas songs left <laughs> we look forward to that I, I uh yeah and the christmas present has been busted out in the house we've got oh, a it, yeah. we've got we've got a tree in the bedroom and um me and the kids and Ida decorate the tree together and the Christmas present was on in the background. And uh, Ida was, she looked at me, she said, you all right? Because like, she was talking to me and I didn't even know she was talking to me because I was, I was just lost in the music that was going on <laughs> listening to, you know, listening to, uh, 
is this right? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, so the, the Christmas present will be a staple in the Williams house for the rest of my life at Christmas. And it's, um, yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful tool to have. Will you ever tour, do a Christmas tour again? Like more Christmas shows, maybe? Maybe, maybe. It's it's not on the horizon right now. There's just so many other things. Yeah. 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 Okay, so moving on. Take the Crown and the Heavy Entertainment Show is next. The Heavy Entertainment Show. Heavy Entertainment Show, okay. All right. And shall we move on to the next one? You ready for the next one? Uh, some questions on that one. I did. I did have a bit of a silly question. <laughs> Rob doesn't want a silly question. <laughs> no, I, I like silly questions. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> Matt and I nearly. <laughs> we nearly. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. Go on then. <laughs> we nearly had a, f- a full-blown row <laughs> over one of the lyrics. Yeah. Um, on I don't want to hurt you. So it's. I I think you're saying thought you were crazy to put your trust in me, and Matt says it's aren't aren't you a quizzy put your trust in me aren't you a quizzy (laughs) (laughs) see okay i am wrong right (laughs) yeah you're wrong because that's what it says on like spotify or something i I figured it might be quizzy to put your trust in me (laughs) i thought quizzy was a word but you know oh but it is it is it makes it makes no sense in that sentence but (laughs) No, okay. Yeah, it's it's not that. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd be wrong there. Uh, right, so I've been expecting you, and Under the Radar 3 is the next pairing. Under the Radar 3. Okay. Right, okay. And then we've got Intensive Care and Reality Killed the Video Star. Ooh. Oh. Difficult choice there. Uh, intensive care or reality killed the video star. I think I'd rather listen like now if you gave me two albums to put on. Yeah. Uh, overall, a reality killed the video star. Right. Okay. This is a so, great way to do it. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it because it must be difficult to, you know. Treat your babies like this. <laughs> yeah, it uh, is. <laughs> so then we're into quarterfinals. So I'm um, sure I don't not cover Lucy up. So then we've got in the first round, we've got Under the Radar 1 and Life Through a Lens. Well, it's very, very difficult because Angels is on Life Through a Lens that yeah. gave me everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I've, I've gleaned the most enjoyment now of Under the Radar 1. So I'll go under the radar one. Ooh. That, that was that was a tricky one. I would find it hard to choose that between is, them. That is yeah. tricky. Oh, this yeah, this is getting difficult now. Uh <laughs> this is this is the business end, as they say. <laughs> so then we've got Rude Box against twenty five. Rude box. Rude box. Okay, and then we have Christmas present against the heavy entertainment show. What I get the most enjoyment out of? Yeah. Christmas present. Christmas okay. present. Okay. And then under the radar three, a reality killed the video star. Reality killed the video star. Okay. Oh, it's getting tense. So into semi finals. Oh. And in the semi finals, we have Under the Radar 1 against Rude Box. And we also have Christmas Present against Reality Killed the Video Star. So, Under the Radar 1 or Rude Box? Rude Box. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, so Rude Box makes it into the final. Okay, and then we have between the Christmas present and reality killed the video star. The Christmas present. Wow. Ooh. I do ah! absolutely love the Christmas present, by the way. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> we've listened to it at least a hundred times recently to prepare for our episodes, which we've just put out around the Christmas present. So it's very timely. Yeah. So then, Rob, 
we have Rude Box against the Christmas present. Okay. So your high I, scorers here. <laughs> I am basically I'm basing this on what I get the most enjoyment out of. Okay. And um it it's root like all the albums don't come out. They don't come out. It's always the next album. Always the next album, apart from the Christmas present. That will be as I say, a staple in the Williams household at Christmas time for the rest of our lives. Yeah. And I get such a kick out of it and there's such joy to it. And there is, you know, silliness and heart yeah. fat and, you know, there's a, there's an authenticity to the subject matter, you know, that's, um, that's, uh, you know, something that could be deemed lightweight and uh i don't know unimportant in stratospheres of you know scratchy beards and <laughs> intellects when it comes to music i don't i don't suffer those pretensions thankfully yeah, yeah. so ladies and gentlemen my favorite album that i've ever done is the christmas present oh yeah and so. two of my all-time favorite songs of yours are on there Home and uh, Rudolph. Yeah, Rudolph should have been the single. Oh, Rudolph. I think absolutely. it should as well. So yeah. there we yeah. are. Christmas Rudolph should, should have been the single. Sorry, Calvin, Dan and Rich. That should have been the single. Masterpiece. Absolutely love it. I can't get enough of that song. It just sounds incredible. Yeah, it does. You know, I, I think, thank you. I the um, The great thing about that album is there'll be gifts that will come out from it you know there's like that it it won't it, it won't just die that album people yeah. will find different songs and the listener will find different songs that uh will appear for the for the years to come and i'm i'm sure that a lot of those songs will be covered by various different people i know there's a swedish artist that covered uh the fairy tale song oh. and uh and there is a artist that is big hero of mine from the eighties that uh, discovered um, December in London. Think I just been me, and he wants to cover it, and oh, uh -huh. uh, it's a thrill that he even knows it. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so I think that those kind of things will happen from that album. Right. Okay. So there we go. That's the Bobby you, World you, Cup. You've won the World Cup with Christmas presents. So. Yeah. But we won't talk about football because we're not football fans, so um, we won't go there. <laughs> right. So I was wondering, you shared band members with James Blunt. Would you ever write with James or do a Yeah, I want to. Him? Yeah. I want yeah. to. We keep, we, we've bumped into each other quite a bit this year and we say, we're getting a room, we're getting a room and we don't and we haven't yet. But we yeah. will. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing about his life and my life. We're seldom in one place. Yeah. It's not like oh, we live here, therefore let's do it on Wednesday in three weeks' time. We'd have to be very lucky to be in the same place. Uh, and I am very fond of James. Um, early on in his career. I went to see him a couple of times and I loved the show. Yeah. And um yeah, I'd I'd love to do something with him. It, it'd be fun. He's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is, certainly is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we lose him from Twitter, there won't be anybody to laugh at anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you at the Royal Albert Hall, we weren't allowed phones because it was being filmed. Did you actually quite like that? Well, you know, were the crowd more engaged because of it, do you think? I don't mind either way. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm not one of those people that are just like, thank God there was no phones. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I, I don't really notice. I don't really notice, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, Do you know, w when I did my original gig there for the swings, uh, everybody, uh, no, uh, swing when you're winning. Yeah. yeah. 
was was an epic gig. It was a very big gig for me, you know, a, a, a marker in the sand, you know, something it, where my career is concerned is very important. Oh, yeah. And um, I was past that place knowing that something special happened that evening. I didn't realise until I go back there and did those couple of gigs. It's the venue itself that makes things extra special. Mm. You know, there's like, oh, there's a magic in the walls. Yeah. You know, and I think I'm built for the Albert Hall. Yeah. Yeah, You know, uh, but I I didn't realise that you're actually performing with a building which I found quite interesting. That was the takeaway from my last couple of gigs there that were really special. I don't, were you there the night I cried? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what happened was, I've been putting this stuff in my hair, right? Thickening stuff. Do you know this, do you know this story? I, I've heard it. I don't know whether you heard it, Matt. I've heard you talk about your hair once <laughs> or twice before. <laughs> yeah, I've been putting thickening stuff in my hair. And, um, uh, and, and like before going on thick, 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 thick. I, I didn't realize I've been spraying Rogaine into my head, which I've tried before, but it depresses me. Oh, no. So I remember being on stage and like bursting into tears and thinking, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? I mean, yeah, I feel emotional and yeah, I'm having a really wonderful time. And yes, I feel all of these things, but this isn't right because... I, I just thought, if I start crying now, I'm not going to stop. Oh. And I and then I, I would get home, and over the next few days, I was really, really down, really, really down. And I was thinking, is there something different about my diet? Is there a pill that I'm? Is there a vitamin that is, is, is off? What what the what the hell? <laughs> and we narrowed it down to this Rogaine that I was spraying into my head. And I realized that what I've been doing before each show was spraying depression into my scalp. Yeah. Oh, no. No, it's funny. It's funny, <laughs> you know, but like the, the real reason that I cried so much on the second day was because I'd sprayed depression <laughs> in my head. I was feeling <laughs> emotional because it had just attacked my hormones. Wow. Well, you created a moment, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did create a moment, you know, and there is, there's, there's plenty of, there's plenty of moments where I'm on stage where I'm overwhelmed with love and I'm overwhelmed with the moment. And I always think that, you know, if I wasn't so intently concentrating, this would be a moment where my heart would expand and it would burst. Yeah. And um, in that moment, it did. I mean, I, I had, um, if I was a sportsman, I would have been doped. <laughs> I've been doped into emoting. <laughs> I was I was cheating with my emotions, uh, but you know those those tearful moments are, are are how it feels, and I I some sometimes I just can't access it to let people know. Yeah, yeah, get it. So we get the impression that you enjoy acting. Um, what would be your dream acting role apart from playing yourself in Better Man? Well, I've written a TV show with a friend of mine. And um, the only thing that I would take joy out of doing is acting in something that I've written. Right. I've no interest in, I mean, if you look at, most films that come out very few and far between that any of them are any good and then if you narrow it down to what role would you like to take in any of those movies not so much i, I just watched um spirited with ryan reynolds and will farrell ah i haven't seen that i, seen it, no. oh, I loved it i absolutely loved it because it's will farrell and it's yeah. ryan reynolds and anybody that can make me laugh I just have a big girly crush on them. And I've got a big girly crush on both of those two. And the people, it's a musical and it's a adaptation of Scrooge, a modern, modern version with massive twists. 
And um, I, I guess that anything right that Ryan Reynolds is in, I'd want to do that. <laughs> but if I ever got the chance to do it, I'd say no, because I can't yeah. be off. Yeah, because you don't even like m making music videos. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you've written the song for Bo. Not yet, no. Bo hasn't got a song. Um, it was, it was, there's, there's a song for Coco called Cobra. Um, that's a Lofthouse song. There's also Coco's Lullaby on, um, the Christmas present. And, uh, she there's was, one you shared on, sorry, there's one you, you shared on Instagram live as well for Coco. What's that? that? It's, I think that might be Cobra. She got oh, a temper. Cobra, she's under what is over. Yeah, that's now. it. Yeah, that one. Yeah. You get no answers to the questions until you learn your lessons. Somehow, child of mine, you're divine. Yeah. Uh, so she's got that one. Bo hasn't got one yet, but he will. Okay. Hi, I'm Robbie Williams, and you're listening to Robbie Williams Rewind with the Champions. What's your favourite album cover? I know you said you d you didn't like Reality Killed the Video Star. You told Zane Lowe that, but have you got a yeah, favourite? Uh, 25. Yeah? Yeah. 25. Also, uh, the Under the Radar ones. <laughs> yeah. You spend you spend a fortune with these massive productions, and like my favourite ones are just stuff that we took on holiday. Yeah, yeah. Shows me wandering, me wandering naked through my my forest at Compton Bassett. Yeah, <laughs> having a tree as you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it just goes to show, you know, you you don't need to spend a fortune. No, you just. Go through your own photos and put that up. Yeah. <laughs> what's What's the best piece of advice you've given Guy, and what's the best piece that he's ever given you? I don't know if there is a piece of advice that I've given Guy, or Guy has given me. No. I don't think that's how the relationship works. Right. Um, the best piece of advice that Guy has given me. It's just. Get closer to the mic, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. Uh, yeah, you're too far away from the mic. Get, <laughs> get closer. Or, or can you stand a bit further away from the mic? <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Love it. We, we enjoyed his show recently. We saw his one-man show in, at the Bugley Festival. And uh, someone at the end asked... Uh, he was playing Angels, and uh, then someone said, oh, um, do you mind if we could all sing it? And uh, this whole sort of church hall place that we were in, everyone stood up, and we all sang Angels, and it was absolutely beautiful. So, oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. He would have loved that. And yeah, I, yeah I, he did. I, I, love, I love the thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> so Matt saw, first saw you live at Glastonbury in 1998. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on doing the Legends versus Headliner slot? I know you're doing Isle of Wight this year, which we are going we'll to. We'll be at the Isle of Wight. Legends. Be uh, are you fussed? Yeah, I kind, kind of am fussed. Like, not fussed for it to be a problem that I haven't been asked yet. You oh. know, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it would be... I know I would slaughter it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that it, it's um, it's one of those times and places where there's a reimagining of what Robbie Williams is for it perception wise. When you do Glastonbury, perception changes. Yeah. And uh, more than any other festival, you know, um, uh Diana Ross could play any festival and not get any traction. Diana Ross plays Glastonbury and everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Barry yeah. Kibb does the same thing. He could play the Isle of Wight and you wouldn't even know he'd done it. But if he yeah. plays Glastonbury, everybody knows that he does. So it it does 
it does a, a remarkable thing for perception. And um, I know that there would be a lot of people there that have an oblique understanding of what I am. Mm -hmm. But if they actually saw me do it, I think I'd take their heads off. Yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, I look forward to doing that if I get the opportunity, because I know there's a lot of heads out there that uh, once they see what it is, mm -hmm. they they will know instead of having a feeling that it might be something that it isn't. Yeah. I'll just have to convince Lucy that camping is all right and that she can do it. She's not she's not into sleeping in a tent, but you know, I think if you if you're there, she's all <laughs> right. Go, glamp, do the glamp. Well, the that's glamping, what we're doing yeah. at the Isle of Wight. We are, we are doing that at the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Proper yeah, bad. I mean, there's the Isle of Wight will be that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, because I, I know there'll be a uh, a lot of floating voters there too mm -hmm. that uh, are about to witness what it is yeah mm. yeah so i was wondering what happened to the podcast that you were going to do with andy goldstein that you recorded with him what happened was this i gave away too much information and it's all gold but all it would mean is that it would basically be doing a free reveal for the tabloids every week. Right. You know, uh, and... Oh, I see. Uh, and as it happens, you know, you don't get... You don't get a fair crap, crack of the whip or represented properly. And the most sensational bits, of which there are many, would be taken out and made even more sensational. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's the point of doing that for free? Yeah. Yeah. Making somebody else rich off the yeah. back of your, you know, so unfortunately, as much fun as it was, and I will be working with Andy, but on a different project, as much as much fun as it was, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be bait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to be, uh, it does nothing for me. Right. You know, because what there'll be what, 5,000 people that will listen to it, but there will be millions of people that will read the headline mm. and there will be no context. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so um, it does, it would do me more damage than it would be good. Mm -hmm. Are you excited or nervous about Better Man coming out? I'm both excited and both nervous. Yeah. I'm not nervous that it isn't any good because it's what I've seen has blown me away. Mm. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that I'm nervous about is being in the crosshairs again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's like uh, the, the films coming out and the Netflix things coming out and uh, I haven't been, the 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 thing that has made the it, I I've not been truly economically viable to the lesser energies associated with the media for a mm. long time, which has made my life enjoyable yeah. and made all of this possible. Just mm -hmm. like I've got my job, I'm dead happy. Da 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 da, you know. I I need these couple of things for the wind behind my sails for the third part of my life. Yeah. So they're vital. But if they are a success, then for ever for however long a time I become in the crosshairs again. Yeah. You know, and it's a very vulnerable time to be in the media right now. Yeah. You can get cancelled for anything. And I'm not yeah. talking sexually. I'm just talking mm. anything that you say. What particular day you wake up on the wrong side of history. Yeah. You are a relic from the last century where we thought and felt different things. And you could, you, you, you're 15 seconds away from being cancelled at any moment. And that doesn't feel comfortable. No. And especially for somebody that kind of, like me, that just, 
shoots from the hip with silliness, yeah. not shoots from the hip with um, opinions about how the world should be, yeah. just jokes and laughter and daftness. And um, so there's two ways of looking at it. I'm very much looking forward to it coming out being a success because success feels great. But at the same time, being in those crosshairs makes me feel vulnerable. Yeah, I understand. So we know your fans mean a lot to you. Tell us how it feels to see familiar faces at your gigs. I love looking out at everybody in the audience, the familiar faces. Um, there is a safety net there for me. Yeah. You know, it's like there is, there's strangers and then there's you guys. And um, it's as always a joy to make eye contact and go, oh yeah, 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 cool, cool, cool. Because there is a there is a continuity that right, yeah. I like, and and the continuity breeds safety for me. And like yeah. I touched on earlier on, it's kind of scary up there. As so much as I look confident and in control and bravado and braggy and stuff, and a lot of the time I am confident and i am in control uh, yeah. but my mind races i go places i have intrusive thoughts mm. i you know it's high stakes um i demand and expect an awful lot of me yeah and um i demand and expect to create an energy that stays with people forever because that famous saying goes um people won't remember what you said but they'll remember what how you made them feel yeah mm -hmm. you know and i have uh, a level of professionalism that i demand from myself that these people are taken care of when i'm on stage these people enjoy themselves mm -hmm. you know that these people feel elevated and taken to a different place for an hour and 45. Um, I don't take the responsibility of that lightly or granted. I wake up and it's on me, gig day, it's on me. You know, it's, uh, there is not a, there's no, there's no room for complete relaxation on a gig day. I, I know what's coming up. I know what's expected of me and I know how much it's going to take out of me to do it. Yeah. Um, because it, it involves me being big and it involves me putting out a power of sort that generates a room full of people or a stadium full of people. And uh, with any battery, you know, it, it depletes mm -hmm. and, uh, when you do it over and over again, the battery is depleted to a place where shit, I expect myself to do this thing, but there's nothing in the tank. As it happens, Dr. Showbiz has always been something that I can rely on that imbues my body and takes over. Um, thankfully. Yeah. Leading back to seeing you guys. That is why you guys are really important to me because there is a continuity and a safety and you know a it's like a pair of slippers you know in the best way possible yeah yeah it's like, oh there's a comfort here yeah 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 good <laughs> and it was the same for us as well by the way because as you know the the community that's built up around you you um is a global community and it's just it's just the most beautiful, wonderful thing to be a part of. You know, we, you can go to any gig and we will see people that we, we know and we, well, we obviously catch up with people in between as well. So, you know, we, we've got friends that are friends for life, you know, not just at the, yeah. not just at your gigs. And it's a really beautiful thing. I do seem to attract kind people. Mm. And that means a great deal to me, especially seeing as though, you know, my act for the most, if you ask people what Robbie Williams is, uh, that didn't know, 
you know, they would say full of ego and bravado and self-importance and all of that business. It is amazing that there is a group of people that have seen beyond that and uh, have got together. And those people actually are really kind people. I don't know if that happens with lots of other artists because I'm not lots of other artists, yeah. but there is, um, you know, there is a an overwhelming feeling with me that these people are good people. Yeah. You know, it's like these, these people aren't baddies. No. You know, these people are carers mm. and they, uh, they have kind hearts. And uh, that's, that's a, that's a, that, that's reassuring to know that I've inspired that. Yeah. Great. Because if I do say something nice about myself, that's who I really am. Yeah. Is that there's a kindness and um, yeah, there's there's a kindness and it's it hopefully that shines out through whatever else I pretend to be in any given moment. Yeah, yeah, it does. So I I think like attracts like. Yeah. Hi, I'm Robbie Williams, and you're listening to Robbie Williams Rewind with the Champions. So thank you so much for joining us, Rob. It's been a pleasure to fire all these different questions at you from, from us, from fans, and play the World Cup with you, and hear some different stories, hopefully, that maybe some people haven't heard about before. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, it's been really wonderful. We appreciate you spending the, the time with us. And it's it feels right that we've got the got got you on the show. Um, what is it, episode thirty five, maybe something yeah. like that. Um, because we've pretty much come up to the current day. So we've kind of not rewinding so far back anymore. Have Tim and Flynn been on? Tim said that they would like to. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love them to come I on. Can do it. Yeah. Tim was talking to us and said that he wanted to wait. He was waiting for a particular release or something. He's waiting it? for the Lufthouse official That's announcement. It. Yeah. That it's been announced properly now. Yeah. We'd love to talk to them. Cool. Yeah. And would you join us again for a part two next year between all of you, those loads of different gigs that you've got going on? Yeah. Um, you'll have to come and talk to me about my new album. Ooh. Yeah. I'd love to. Love to do that. Yeah. Yes, Rob. Rob, thank you. We really, really appreciate you spending a couple of hours with us. It's not something I ever envisaged happening when I was like, like a 15-year-old. Take that, fan. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure. You're very, very lovely people with warm hearts, and it's nice to um, have it reciprocated both ways. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be here if I genuinely didn't feel as though this was a two way street of some sort, you know, it's, um, but there's a lot of people out there. And like I say, I can't be friends with everybody as much yeah. as I'd like to be. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, uh, I'm not, um, I'm not very good at, I'm getting better at socializing, but I'm not very good at, I don't know. I, I'm not very good at uh, letting so many people in. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't got I haven't got a lot of social juice for relationships, but it, it's I like I like this and I like how it is. It's it's really cool, and yeah. I, I am here because you you two have meant a lot to me over the years. So mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, thank you, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, my God. Wow. So there you go. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> Two hours talking to Robbie. I just never expected that. Uh, it, it was just an incredible conversation. Uh, completely open, honest Rob. Um, As he Rob, always is. The Rob that we all know and love. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Um, and we got deep in a couple of places. Yeah. Uh, we had a bit of fun, obviously, as you saw. The World Cup went down pretty well, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Christmas present being his favourite album. Yeah, I was surprised at that. Yeah. Makes sense, I think. Yeah. He gave all the reasons why and, yeah, makes absolute sense. 
I think it helps that we were recording this at Christmas time, so he'd just been listening to it. <laughs> yeah, they've just been decorating the Christmas tree with that playing in the background. So what a wonderful interview. And just thank you, Robbie, Rob, from the bottom of our hearts. It really means a lot for you to share that time with us. And yeah, just give us new insights, actually, and answer some of the questions which we know were uh, really important for fans yeah yeah so thanks for joining us everyone hope you enjoyed it yeah and you can find us on social media at rewind robbie on twitter instagram and youtube uh, we share a lot of news and photos and videos lucy's always working very hard at sharing lots and lots of uh, stuff on the socials so yeah please support us and join us and follow us there and uh, we may well share videos from this interview at a later date. But uh, yeah, we'll be going out. You'll probably listen to this in audio form yeah. uh, to begin with uh, because we want to uh, make sure that the podcast does well. And then we will share some videos from this interview later on. So stay tuned for that. And as we said before, Make sure you take a listen to all of our back catalogue of interviews. Yeah, you as could well. be there a while. <laughs> you could be there a while. And also uh, subscribe because we have got some incredible special guests coming up in 2023. Uh, people that have worked with Rob and collaborated with Rob, maybe one or two from the band. Uh, won't, won't reveal too much right now, but yeah, we've got some cool people coming up. So stay tuned. Yeah. Okay. And thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye. Okay, bye. Robbie Williams Rewind.